plaintiff, Beverly Brown, says she started going to the defendant's hair salon last year and was happy with his services at first. Beverly claims after the defendant colored her hair, her hair started falling out. So she's suing for the cost of two wigs and emotional distress. Defendant Michael Skinner says he's been doing hair for 36 years and has a lot of celebrity clients, but he insists he has never damaged anyone's hair. Michael claims Beverly's hair fell out as a result of her medication, not because of his negligence, and therefore he denies owing. He's countersuing for defamation. Start with you. Okay, um, Your Honor, about April of 2015, I started going to Mr. Skinner to uh, condition and treat my hair. Then about November, uh, November uh, I told him that I wanted to color my hair. And there was a specific color that I wanted for my hair. So I had sent him text, I sent him pictures and texts of the colors of my hair and the product. The product could only be bought at, by a licensed salon, so... Is um, this the color you have? Yes, it's pretty much about that color. Yes, sir. All right. This is a hit picture of uh, what I looked like when I walked in the shop. Your Honor, this is a picture of what my hair looked like when I walked out of the shop. Sir, let me hear from you, and then we'll get back to what happened after that. She came in for a hair color. She wanted this specific color. I said, well, do you, are you on high blood pressure and anything like that? She said, yes. I said, well, your hair could fall out because of the fact I had to do a patch strand test. I did the patch strand test. The elasticity of her hair was still strong. When I applied the mix that she wanted, her hair snapped. No, sir. And Let him finish. That's not... What do you mean so, by her, snap? Other words, the elasticity weakened in her hair, and it fell out. I've been doing hair for 36 years. I styled for Sherry Shepard, Frida Payne, a lot of celebrities, and I have never damaged anyone's hair. She took all the credit. She said, no, but I want it. I said, let's, but let's your... Let's back up. I cause... said, but your hair could be damaged. All right. And she took the credit. She said, well, Michael, if you hadn't okay. done it, I would not... I, if you hadn't done it, I would have been upset if you didn't do it, but I did it. All she right. took all the credit. She even said in front of my client that they were a witness to the fact that she took the credit okay, for it. Now, let me ask you, because there's something I'm not under... I'm missing something. When you took the patch test... Right. ...it worked. Yes, sir. Did you do anything different when you made the application? No, but when I put the mix on it, it snapped. So you did do something different. No, I had to do something different to get right. the color. Would yes. it say yes? Yes, I'm sorry, Okay, sir. so... To get the color. Why would you do a patch test when that is not ultimately going to be what determines whether it damages the hair or no, not? What determines it is the coloring. No, the coloring... Okay, it's a difference. Hair color is with 20 volume peroxide, okay? That's hair color. That's depositing color. Mm -hmm. Now, a mix is no peroxide. Mm -hmm. It's just a color. It's mm -hmm. no peroxide. Now, what the is a test? A patch test is with the peroxide, which brings the, hair, le the level of the hair up to blonde, okay? To, so it could deposit the mix. I didn't know that the mix would do that to her hair because but, in order... Wait, hold on, hold on. In order to get that color... <laughs> no, wait. In order... Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. In order to get that hair color, sir, Your Honor, in order to get the hair color that she wanted, you had to use the bleach to highlight the hair to deposit the mix, or else it would have not took taken. And you should have done all of that as part of the patch test. Sir, I didn't have to because the peroxide... Yeah, you had no to. Peroxide. It sounds like I you had know, to to me. I didn't know she mm -hmm. would have a chemical reaction Sir, to that color. You would have known had you used all of the mix as a patch test. This is a p hit picture of uh, what I looked like when I walked in the shop. Your Honor, this is a picture of what my hair looked like when I walked yeah. out of the shop. Plaintiff Beverly Brown is suing her former hairstylist because she claims after he colored her hair, it started falling out. Yeah, what are you saying, man? Um, at one point, Michael asked me for the money that he, he needed the money. So I gave him the sixty dollars that we had. I need some clarity on the past. Oh, he didn't test. give me I don't money. Get he Debbie, gave me please, twenty dollars. Okay. Director of hair and makeup. He, um, Maybe hold on, ma'am. You're talking about the money. I'm still trying to talk about the <laughs> test. Now, Debbie. Debbie is our director of hair and makeup here. 
She's been sued plenty of times, so that's why I wanted her. No, she's never been sued. She's a very accomplished young lady, does the makeup for presidential candidates, does the makeup for first ladies for many years, so, and for the judge. So she knows what she's doing. Now, she's alleging her hair fell out after he applied the color chemicals. Okay. They took a patch test. It was fine. He then added another chemical. So, then it came out. Would you add the color before the test or not? You would test both. You would test back here mm -hmm. to go with the active ingredients, mm -hmm. and then sometime you would test here mm -hmm. to see if she would have an allergic reaction to the color. Let's you must test. test both. All right, thank you. Thanks, now. Kevin. And she's an expert witness, sir. You didn't test it No, twice. I didn't. All right. So you use one uh, product that you did not test. Right. All right. And ma'am, what do you say occurred? Your Honor, what happened was um, he... My hair was coming out in the shop, mm -hmm. and he said I was just shedding. I said, I know the difference between shedding and this is not shedding. And he said, oh, no, he assured me it was just shedding. <laughs> and, I mean... Okay, so what did you do? Man? Okay, so he cuts and then he combs it and he puts it all back. So when I look in the mirror, I'm fine. But he puts this ugly purple mess in the front of my hair, which was supposed to be lavender. And that's what I'm looking at that here. That purple mess, that's yes. That's what I'm looking at in that the front. That purple mess in the front of my hair. So when you saw this, what did you do? I when went you saw purple. Okay, I went home. it was supposed home. to be light. Okay, I went home. I kind of was... Why did you leave that shop? What was I also not gonna do? Jump on him. <laughs> go ahead. Sir, I'm not I'm going, to, I'm not going know, to jail I for no hair. That. I'm, I'm just not going kidding. to jail for no hair, I'm just okay? Kidding. I'm just kidding. And he even said to me that night after I was leaving, he said, You're not gonna jump on me, are you? <laughs> because that's the normal person. That. That's what the normal person true. would but do. But I didn't know what my head looked uh, like because of the way he had combed it and everything else. Sir. So you recognized when you got home that same day or night? Yes, that same night. And, and then was... did you call him then? No, I called him the next morning morning because uh -huh. it was like 11 o'clock, 10.30, uh -huh. 11 o'clock. So when I went in his shop the next day, early that morning, he said, I'll do your hair before... I got a couple of customers coming in. He put a henna on my hair and cut my hair off. What's a henna? A henna is a vegetable compound that... So you let him put some more stuff in your hair. <laughs> what if... Uh, what was Her I gonna do with that? Go to another expert. It was Sunday. It was Sunday. I couldn't go to work like okay, that on so Monday. so instead you just go back to the same person who savaged your hair. Got it. And what happened then? Okay, did so... Did he savage it more? Yes, he did. No stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, I wind up with my... All the texture of my hair. My hair's bone straight and it's like straw and he's colored my scalp. I've got burnt... Did you say something to him that day? I told him, I said, yes. I said, Michael, this... At first, he wanted... He said, I didn't know it was going to turn brown. It was supposed to be brown. It what? turned red. Mm -hmm. So I said, Michael, I said, what, what are we going to do here? He, mm -hmm. said, I'm, he said, I'm so embarrassed. I'm sorry. He said, I'll do your hair. He said, I'll, I'll process and treat your scalp until your hair grows back in. Plaintiff Beverly Brown is suing her former hairstylist because she claims after he colored her hair, it started falling out. All right, sir, let me hear from you. Well, she called me back and then asked for a refund. I said, I don't mind giving you a refund, so I wrote release liability refund. And what I thought that was it. What do you think happened? Huh? What do you think caused their hair to fall out? Because she's on high blood pressure medication. If you and look at this... she told you that? Yes, she did. And I so told it... her... And mm -hmm. I told her that she shouldn't do it. She still wanted it. Okay, but you're the professional. I know. And I told her... Prof... Well, yeah, if you but know, then you should have done it. I give the clients what she wants, but well, I told her hey, what happened. keep your voice down. I'm sorry, sir. Yeah, you are. <laughs> with this hair, that's for sure. Sir. Based on what you did with this, you, if you're not, you should be. <laughs> you knew that it would damage your hair. And just because she said, do it anyway, you did it. And I shouldn't have. I hate I ever did that's it. That's called negligence. Now, 
You say something about, you send her a refund, and she signs something releasing you yes. from liability? Exactly. And sir. was that after you had damaged her hair? That's after. Ma'am, did she this happen? Refund. No, and she sir. It. He gave me a money order. Mm -hmm. And it says... And, 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 and that money order did not have this release uh, refund liability on it, and this is not my signature. I have a copy of my driver's license that shows you my Let's signature. And you say that's she signed Sir, you say she signed it? No, no, that's the receipt. She, she signed didn't sign order. it? Sir, that's the money order receipt. She signed the check that I sent to her. That's not the check, that's the receipt. She signed that? I put her name on, she, she signed, signed the it? check. Yes, that's just so like signing that. she signed the receipt? No, I, so you I, I wrote her, her name, name on that. Yeah, because right. it's for her. And that's you yelled at me to... once again after I've told I'm you to sorry, be quiet. I'm sorry, I don't mean yeah, to I know you are. You're held liable for contempt. But I also would have held you liable anyway. And I'm going to grant your claim. Next time you go before a judge, don't scream and yell, particularly after you've already demonstrated and admitted to negligence. Your claim is dismissed and yours is granted. Have Thank a good you, day. Sir. Well, what about the time when you asked some people for money that you work for and they gave you a $500 check. So this is what your person. What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. You said one of your patients gave you $500 and you said you was going to cash it. You couldn't cash the check. You were going to go back and ask for cash. And you getting money from senior citizens. So now you want to set me up for your hair like you was doing everybody no, else. I I, no, I want to. You full of it.